Hello everyone, welcome to another Star Wars Zelda Public video and for this video I'm going to be talking about the new uh, Cartel Market direct sale purchases that will be coming with Knights of the Eternal Throne. Now a lot of the items that you see here were previously data mined to be actually coming out of cartel packs but it seems as though Bioware's decided to make a little bit of a change where they're making a lot more of these things uh, direct sale purchases from the cartel market which is a welcome addition because I think a lot of people are much happier with uh, you know paying money for cartel coins but then making sure they get the item that they want and uh, you're going to see a variety of items armor sets even companions and mounts all of those things are now going to be available through direct purchases and so let's get right into the first one which is the imperial bastions armor set this one's going to be a direct purchase uh, the description for it is as follows a fearsome set of armor forged on droman Kass and designed to intimidate opponents on the battlefield now originally this was data mined to be a gold armor set coming out of the eternal command pack but obviously they made a little bit of a change they decided it's better off being a direct sale purchase i'm quite happy about this because i think this is one of the nicer armor sets we're getting with knights of the eternal throne it's very very well designed i love it it's very it's going to make a very good sith armor set and so i'm happy to see that that's going to be a direct purchase and um it's probably going to cost around like 1200 cartel coins that what that's what most of the armor sets cost right now so that's quite nice. The next one is the Jedi Survivalist armor set. This was originally data mined to be a silver armor set coming out of the Eternal Command Pack. Now once again, it's going to be a direct purchase. Uh, the description for it is, Seek the mysteries of the Force with an armor set built to endure the galaxy's harshest climates. Now originally in the data mined version that was going to be coming out of the Cartel Pack, there was actually a hood on this one. But now it seems as though they've decided that the hood is better left down. Which I think is nicer. I don't think the hood was that nice of a thing originally. So um, uh, overall I think the best part of this armor set is the upper body armor. I'm not too crazy about the helmet. I don't think it looks too nice. But nonetheless, it's going to be a direct purchase. I'm not sure whether that's actually a good thing. Because um, since this was going to be a silver armor set coming out of the Eternal Command Pack, it was probably going to sell pretty cheap on the GTN. Because all silver armor sets sell for uh, pretty cheap. Uh, usually they don't go above 100, 200,000 credits. But now it's probably going to cost like 1,200 cartel coins on the on the cartel market. So it's actually an increase in price. No matter how nice or ugly a cartel market set is, they always cost 1,200 cartel coins around. Uh, you can just check the cartel market for yourself and you'll see really, really nice armor sets like the Exterminator, the Eradicator's armor set, and then you'll see really ugly armor sets like the Humble Hero armor set, but they all cost the same. And so this one I think was better left in the cartel pack because you would have been able to pick it up for very cheap on the GTN if you wanted it. But nonetheless, that's now going to be a direct sale purchase. The next one is the Relentless Insurgents armor set. It's described to be the well-worn armor of a rebel who knew giving up was never an option. So it's designed obviously for instead of being Sith or for Empire characters, it's designed more for the Republic characters and for rebels against the Eternal Throne. I don't think this one's a particularly nice armor set. I'm not sure if this was data mined to originally come out of a cartel pack, but, um, but no, I just don't think it's overall that nice of an armor set. So there's really nothing much to talk about it. For the most part, I think Bioware makes really, really good empire armor sets so things for sith even imperial agents but for the most part i find that they lack with good armor sets for jedis i hope i wish they would just bring back the original uh knights of um original kotar and star wars robes that you see in the movies and stuff because a lot of people have been wanting those so i'm not sure why they're wasting time with crappy armor sets like this when they could be making really good armor sets that everyone wants but nonetheless once again another direct sale purchase i doubt anyone's really going to be willing to pay 1200 cartel coins for this one once again, I'm kind of just assuming they're all going to cost 1200 cartel coins because that's what they cost right now and every single armor set that's ever been given to us in game has been around that price. Some of them have been like 1400 cartel coins. They go on sale pretty often. Right now, at the moment I'm making this video, all of the armor sets on the cartel market are on like a 50% sale. So uh, who knows if they're going to do something like this for Knights of the Eternal Throne. The next one here actually isn't data mined to be a direct sale purchase. It might be coming out of a cartel pack, but it is the Hor Horizon Guard armor. Now, the H Horizon Guard are um, Valen's new elite guardians. So basically with Arkin, you have these Zakul Knights um, and you have the Exarts of Zakul. Those are kind of the elite guard. Well, now this is the Horizon Guard and um, it's a really, really nice armor set. They look really cool. I particularly really like the upper body armor. I think that's probably the nicest part of this set. And I'm guessing it's going to be a direct sale purchase because any type of these standard armor sets usually are just put straight up on the cartel market. For example, Thexon's armor set, Nathema Zealot's armor set, the Cool Knight armor set. These are all kind of just standard armor sets that you see all throughout the chapters. And so I would assume that this one's going to follow that pattern and also be just put up on the cartel market. 
And that concludes the direct seal purchases for the armor sets. Now moving on to the mounts, the first mount that you see here is the Command Corsair. Uh, this one's described to be a custom speeder that's specially designed for the Alliance Commander, the only way to ride into battle. Now, once again, I think this one's a pretty bad mount. I mean, I guess the design would appeal to some people. I think it's just not unique enough. I mean, um, if they were going to design a mount that's specifically for the Alliance Commander, I would have liked for it to maybe been like a throne or something. I think that would have been really cool. Like, we, the Ambassador Hover Chair, the Imperial Command Thrones, those are really, really old mounts. It would have been nice for them to maybe introduce a similar model now. It's been like so many years since they've released a model like that. So it would have been cool to maybe have like an Eternal Throne mount type thing. That would have been really good for an Alliance Commander. This one just, I think, is way too simple of a speeder. But nonetheless, that's going to be a direct purchase, and if it does appeal to you, well, you can go ahead and ride into battle as the leader of the alliance with this mount. The next one is the Royal Firenock, Fernock. I guess I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, this one's described to be a vicious nocturnal predator trained to submit only to its chosen master. Now, this one was originally data mined as a gold mount that's going to be coming out of the Eternal Command Pack. Now, this was replaced. This one's now going to become a direct purchase, and the gold mount that you're getting out of the Eternal Command Pack is actually the Savage Falone. But I'll talk about that in a separate video. I've already spoken about this mount in a previous video, uh, basically my conclusion was it looks nice, it's a new mount and I'm always up for new mounts but on the other hand it's also not that special, I would have pr personally preferred that it was a much bigger mount, I mean I'm not sure why they're so opposed to making mounts that are as big as Rancors and stuff, I find that those tend to be the most popular and the most used by people. Uh, these type of small beast mounts, there's, there's a lot like them in game but um, nonetheless that's going to be there for anyone that wants a fire knock. Uh, another direct sale purchase of a mount is the Scorched Dewback. It is described to be a mutant strain of the Tatooine Reptile, prized for their colorful hide, feared for their vicious temperament. Now this one's a really really cool mount, I actually think this one's probably one of the nicest mounts out of the three that I've talked about. Uh, it's really cool because it looks as if though the front half of it's been skinned and the back half of it isn't skinned. You can see by the difference in the feet. One foot is completely red as if the skin's been ripped off and the other one still has some of that yellow skin on it. And um, at mo well, since it's called a Scorch Dewback, I would assume maybe it's been burnt alive or something like that. It's a really, really cool mount. Um, and it's glowing. It seems to be glowing red. I'm not sure if that's some sort of effect that's going to happen actually when... Um, when you ride it or maybe it's a flourish or something but nonetheless really really cool so that's actually a good direct purchase i'm pretty excited about now of all the data mine information the nicest mount i have seen is this one and unfortunately it's an unknown mount so we don't know whether it's coming out of a cartel pack or it's going to be a direct sale purchase or even really what this animal is uh, right from the bat it looks like some sort of messed up rancor uh, but on the other hand it could be another thing that we haven't seen before a lot of these types of um, messed up creatures are going to be on Nathema because they were showing us some images and they've been showing us acclays and rancors and things like that that have all been messed up because Nathema is just a messed up planet after Vishya did his whole ritual there and consumed the force and everything so this might very well be a mount that relates to that chapter uh, we do know that we're getting mounts like that with the Corrupted Ackley that was data mined also. And Corrupted Ackley is obviously referring to an Ackley that was from Nathema's planet. So maybe this is actually a Rancor that's been messed up that was on that planet and it's going to be released in a later cartel pack. Uh, it might be the Wrathful Rancor, which was actually data mined. But once again, it doesn't really look like a Rancor, but uh, Nathema can really mess an animal up. So it could be that. Nonetheless, really, really nice mount. I'm definitely really excited about this one. As I said, it's probably one of the nicest mounts that have been data mined so far. Finally, we have the creature companion, the Tukata. Now, this one I already talked about in an earlier video where it was data mined. Uh, it wasn't clear which cartel pack it was coming out of. Now, it seems as though it's not coming out of a cartel pack. It is going to be a direct purchase from the cartel market. This is the first creature companion that, or any companion really, that will be available from the cartel market. Uh, it says, acquire a savage new companion, the Tukata. The ferocious beast can be unlocked by players level 10 or higher and is available to all character classes. This is the beast that you see on Korriban. It is definitely a beast for the Sith because the Sith have tamed it on Korriban. They use it as like, you know, part of their um, trainings and stuff like that. So it's going to be a really, really cool beast companion to have. Finally, we have the pets, which um, I personally don't care about, but as people have said in my videos, a lot of people do care about pets, so let's quickly talk about them. We have the Ember Act Dog. Once again, these are all direct purchases. It says, summon a friendly Ember Act Dog to follow you and observe your adventures. This one's actually really nice. I like the whole fiery effect on it. So, um, it's really small though. I don't know why they don't make beasts bigger. I mean, pets bigger. We have really large companions, so why can't we have, uh, you know, larger pets? I think 
generally people like larger pets rather than um, these small little baby things that you can follow you around. Next one is the Woodland Muvor. This one's once again going to be a direct purchase. Nothing too special about it. Eh, it just kind of looks plain, in my opinion. But um, there is a, a creature companion that's going to be a Muvor. So it's going to look like this, but it's actually the blue color. Uh, and it's going to be a little bit bigger. That's actually going to be a creature companion coming out of the Oppressor Cartel Pack. Finally, we actually have a crystal that's going to be a direct purchase. It's been a long time since we've had a crystal added to the cartel market. Uh, this one is called the Violet Corona Color Crystal. Uh, nothing too special from what I can see from the image. Maybe it'll look nicer in game. Once again, the images can be deceiving sometimes, so we'll have to see how that plays out in game. But just right from the bat, I don't see anything too special from it. All right, and that concludes the video. I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm actually pretty excited about these direct sale purchases. It's nice to know that if you pay money for cartel coins, you're actually going to get the item you want. Let's hope that maybe we'll see some of the newer and nicer platinum sabers following this trend, where instead of putting it in a cartel pack, where you can open up 10 to 15 hyper crates, not get a single one, um, let's hope that maybe we'll see some of these platinum stuff actually being put as direct sale purchases. Uh, make sure you check out my other videos. I'll be talking about the changes to the Eternal Command pack because we do have some new mounts and stuff being added to that pack. And I'll also be talking, uh, doing a quick video about the decorations and the two new platinum items. So those will be uploaded alongside this video. So make sure you go check them out. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one.